Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my reading through the New Testament in 44 Days project. We are on day 24 and we'll be reading Acts 20 through 24. So, let's jump right in today and see what Paul is up to in Macedonia and Greece. Acts 20, verse 1. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples, and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. When he had gone over those parts, and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, and there abode three months, and when the Jews laid wait for him, he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. There accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristocratus, and Secundus, and Gaius of Derbe, and Timotheus and of Asia, Tychus and Tromphius. These are going before, buried for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them in to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eucatus, just being fallen to deep sleep, and Paul was long preaching. He sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, he had broken and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, till even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted, and were not a little comforted. And we went before to ship, and sailed into Asos, there intending to take in Paul. For so had he appointed mine himself to go afoot. And when he had met with us at Asos, we took him in, and came to Mytilene. And we sailed thence, and came the next day over against Chios. The next day we arrived at Samos, and tarried, at Truglium, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus, and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you all at seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears, temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you, and have taught to you publicly, and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, they go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I life, my, my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold... I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own self shall men arise, speak in perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember, that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that... These hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. 
and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Acts 21, 1. And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Kos, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Petara, and finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went abroad and set forth. Now we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand, and sailed into Syria, and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when he had accompanied those days, we were departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city, and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave of one of another, we took ship, they returned home again. When we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Ptolemais, and saluted the brethren, and abode with them one day. And the next day that we were of Paul's company, departed, and came into Caesarea, and we have entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. The same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy, and as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and he shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What me need to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be persuaded, we see, saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one Manasson of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them and declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. When they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. To therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them, take them and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with hand, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As such in the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law, and this place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple, and hath polluted this holy place. They had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band. That Jerusalem was in uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down into them. When they saw the chief captain and his soldiers, they left beating of Paul. And the chief captain came near and took him and commended him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. Some cried one thing, some another, another the multitude. And when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he had came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying, Away with him! And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? 
Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Sicily, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in Hebrew tongue, saying, Okay, Acts 22 saying acts 22 verse 1 men brethren and fathers hear ye my defense which i make now unto you and when they had heard that he spake in the hebrew tongue to them they kept the more silence and he saith i am verily a man which am a jew born in tarsus a city in sicily yet brought up in this city at the feet of gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous toward god as ye all are this day and I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that, as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. They that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldst know his will, and see that, ju that just one, and shouldst hear the voice of his mouth. Thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by, and consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know whereof they cried so against him. As they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. And straightway they departed from him which should have examined him, and the chief captain was also was afraid, after he knew that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. On the morrow, because he would have known the certainty whereof he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands, and commanded the chief priests and all their counsel to appear, and brought Paul down, and set him before him. Acts 23, verse 1. And Paul, earnestly beholding the counsel, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day, and the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by, revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And when he had said so, 
So said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. There arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose, and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man. But if a spirit or angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled into pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them, and bring him into the castle. And the night following, the Lord stood by him, and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for thou... For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. When it was day, certain of the Jews bounded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. They came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing till we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you, tomorrow as though he would acquire something more perfectly concerning him and we or ever he come near are ready to kill him now when paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait he went and entered into the castle and told paul and paul called one of the centurions unto him and said bring this young man unto the chief captain for he hath a certain thing to tell him so he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said paul the prisoner called me unto you and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee who hath something to say unto thee and the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately, and asked him, What is that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him, and now they are ready looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charge him, See thou tell no man that thou hast shewed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, and spearmen two hundred, in the third hour of the night, at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts that they may set Paul on, and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner, Claudius Lysias, unto the most excellent governor, Felix, sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews, and should have been, and have been killed of them. Then came I with an army, and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into the, their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. When it was told to me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee, and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. The soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and return to the castle, who, when they were came to Caesarea, delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was, and when he understood that he was of Sicil Sicilia, Cilicia, <laughs> I will hear thee, said he, and thine accusers are also come, and he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. Oh, yea. Okay, Acts 24. And after five days, Ananias, the high priest, descended with the elders, and with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that, that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by the province, we accept it always, and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding that it be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldst hear us of thy clemency a few words. We have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain Lysias came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Then Paul, after the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, for as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest under understand that there are 
There are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem to for to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believe in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And hereon do I exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense toward God and toward men. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult, who ought to have been here before thee, and object, if they had aught against me. Or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called and questioned by you this day. And when Felix had heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysias the chief captain shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or to come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way, for this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might loose him whereof he sent for him the oftener and commune with him. But after two years, Porcius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Wow, very, very complicated matter, what's happening, or what happened to Paul, I should say. Um, and it just shows how much the world was against anything to do with Jesus, anything to do with, um, you know, God, for that matter. You know, it's, it was basically... All these Sadducees and Pharisees, it was just all an act because they, they liked the praise, they liked the money, they liked the prestige, but um, it was just vain and empty words for them and rituals. They didn't actually really believe. And when uh, Jesus came by and, you know, it stirred up, you know, people actually believing, they felt threatened that they're going to lose their, you know, their riches or their glory. So they just instantly turned evil toward anyone was preaching about Christ Jesus. Sad, even now, more than ever, people are against anything good. A lot of people are against anything good and anything to do with God or Christ. But all we can do is pray for them. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And, as always, TTFN ta, -ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember, to put God first in everything you do, wait upon him, believe upon him, and you'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow with more acts. Take care.